Welcome to the Sideline Live podcast. Subscribe for more episodes and follow our social media at the Sideline Live. We'd love to hear from you. On this episode, I'm delighted to welcome Mark Reynolds of the Hoopfolio podcast and Anus Super League men's team. We had a great chat about his professional basketball career, playing GAA with the Longford Senior men's team, and why he started up his very own basketball podcast. I hope you enjoy. Hi Mark, thanks a million for coming on. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. How are you keeping? Really good, yeah. Uh, just uh, trying to adjust to the second wave of COVID, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> very good. And what I like to do is kind of give the guests a chance to kind of introduce themselves. So I'll give you 40 seconds to a minute to kind of give a lowdown of who you are. All right, this is my elevator pitch. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so Mark Reynolds, I uh, currently play basketball for Kalosh Dana, which is in the Super League. Uh, in the Irish Basketball Super League. Um, been here since last season. Um, we had a probably uh, exceeded expectations last season, I suppose. Uh, we got to a cup final and became third in the league and we just moved up from being promoted from National League Division 1. So, uh, yeah, did quite well there. Previous to that, played in the UK. I was there for like five or six years. Um, played the B- BBL, which is the top league there. Uh, the uh, NBL Division One, which is the league below the BBL, which would still have uh, some professional players, and then the NBL Division Two, which is uh, yeah, not not professional at all. It'd be more for people who just don't want the level of commitment. Uh, before that, played in Germany as well for in Pro B for a year, um, and previous to that was just college basketball uh, in Scotland. <laughs> not that. Not that notable for, for basketball. Yeah. So what we're going to do is kind of just start back at your sort of beginning of your basketball journey. So you're originally from Longford. Is that correct? Yeah, Longford. So again, uh, well, actually, you'd be surprised. There's actually more decent basketball players from Longford uh, oh, okay. underage, but they tend not to, uh, they tend to kind of, like if you used to look at some of like my generation, they actually would have made some of the national teams underage. Oh, okay. yeah. but they tend to not stay with it generally. Yeah, that's what I've seen anyway. But um, yeah, so there's a club there called Longford Falcons, um, which fond memories of there. And I think my mum brought me down when I was like 11. And I played tennis uh, a lot, actually. Played soccer and stuff like that, but just, just fell in love with basketball. And there was just so many people in the gym at the one time. There was like, I remember obviously no COVID, so there was like 50 yeah. <laughs> people in the gym. And I, I was actually kind of intimidating because there was just so many people there. And it was a mixture of girls and guys and he just, uh, everybody was so into it. And there was something cool about the sport that I couldn't quite put my finger on that I really liked. Yeah. It was just a cool sport. Like I kind of discovered the NBA, like, and hanging around with the guys uh, that were on the, I think the, the first team that they picked off the, off the, they had Saturday morning games and then they had like the community games. Do you remember the community oh, games? Oh yeah, yeah. Again? So there was a Longford North team. Okay. Uh, and that was our team. And I don't know, I don't know Anthony about Longford South, but anyway, I don't know who they were. <laughs> but basically, you had to win out your county, you win out your province, and then you get to All-Ireland. So under 13, we ended up going to an All-Ireland final, losing to Castle Island from Kerry. Oh, okay. And then the next year, most of us were underage, and we won an All-Ireland medal under 13. And that was it then. Like, I was hooked. Like, you were so hooked, yeah. I was, I was just hooked after that. And it was community games, weirdly, they did it. And then under 14 for St. Mel's, which was my school, uh, we won a national medal there. Uh, we, we got to the All-Ireland Final and won. And then under 16, I think we won two community games medals. So that it was kind of like all through school and community games and you just getting on the teams and having so much fun, like going to these tournaments. Yeah, and uh, winning everything, you know. <laughs> Well, that helped, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, yeah, like the coach, I probably should say, just think, I should, I'll probably send this to him. Uh, Mick Murphy is his name, and his son now coaches the club or runs the club, essentially. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Mick, Mick would be, like, I'm sure if you talk to a lot of, uh, like, big basketball clubs, they would know who Mick Murphy was um, in Longford, and sometimes he holds an Easter tournament and invites clubs from all around the country oh, brilliant, into yeah. Longford. So people would know that tournament, or some people would. Um so he's quite well known, but he was fantastic. He was 
one of these coaches that would just run the the bejesus out of you. <laughs> so basically, he. <laughs> I remember being under twelve and actually feigning an injury, so we didn't have to go and run laps around the sports complex. It was like a decent. Yeah, it was that bad. Oh so like it, it was. Uh, I remember being twelve and th- like I, I had the awareness at twelve to know that I was like, this is nuts. Like, <laughs> why? Like. Wh- like he was making us literally like do laps of the mile like and timing us and then getting us to beat our times. And I, I remember being like 12 or whatever and thinking like, the, like I was even questioning it in my head and telling my friends, that, why, why is he making this go this hard? But we ended up winning like- That was it, that was, the, that was the secret was all that running. <laughs> well, I, I don't know that. I, then there was a part of it was like, was it talent or was it because he worked us really hard? But it was probably a mix of both. And we had a bunch of talent and a few of those lads did, as I said, make the underage national teams then uh, so they would have made the inter-regional teams and then the national teams so it must have done some good and did your parents or siblings play at all or were you just kind of the only one uh, yes yeah, so i got one brother philip he's like a year and four months older than me and and philip was brought down at the same time and he was on the uh those teams as well uh, as in the community games ones he was a, a little bit older it just so happened that my year happened to be 84 i'm showing how old i am <laughs> it was, uh, was the year that we had like a guy called william murray and another guy called uh kia morrissey they were both on the national teams underage yeah and they were really good and they happened to be underage the same year again after my brother left and then oh, okay. we won a bunch of stuff so like it just you know there were these waves of talent that come through at the same year sometimes so i got lucky i got really lucky and I was actually, that brings up the standard. You're, you know, everyone else on the team. When yeah, exactly. Really you kind of, like, when you have the elite talent on your team, you kind of, they raise the bar and you kind of follow them, follow their lead. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to help everybody, however that works. Yeah. And you spoke about it briefly there. You went to college in Scotland, was it? Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, I kind of like, um, yeah, I kind of played, played, just to kind of transition into that bit, like I, I played like a point guard, like a guard position because I was 5'7". Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I, I, we were talking yesterday. I remember I kind of said I had this massive growth spurt. So yeah, yeah. I, I kind of was seven, 15 and I was five foot seven. Something okay. Like that. And I remember I didn't get selected for the national team under 15 and I was gutted. And I, I was kind of like, I, like legitimately was like, I think I'm done with basketball. And okay. I was like, I didn't make the team. And it wasn't, I was obviously sad about missing out, but I, I felt like, there's nowhere necessarily that I want to go with this. Like obviously the Super League was probably existed at the time, but nobody from Longford seemed to continue it on after that. So at that point I was just looking to go to university and I was like, uh, I'm not that interested in basketball. I lost interest after that. Okay. And then I, I think I got to like, um, I got to like 17 and that year I just grew ridiculously. Um, which would make sense for both my parents were tall my brother was tall so I grew from like five seven to like six four wow in a year I remember being going from being like less than average in my year to being like the second tallest guy in my year by the time I was doing my leaving so yeah and, every, and I remember one lad turned around to me in class he goes what the hell just happened to you in the space <laughs> what are they weeks? feeding you at home yeah but it's of course you just you, I didn't think I was going to grow at all so yeah yeah so I went from being a point guard to being like a, a six four I think it was the end of being six four around 18 yeah and 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 I, but again, I, I had take. I actually got growing pains in my knees. Like I, I was going to say, playing. yeah, not surprised. Uh, I went to the doctor about it and everything, and he was like, uh, "Your ligaments are stretching, and you just need to time for your body to adjust, and yeah. you need to just stretch and stuff." It was really painful. I remember I nearly passed out at church wow, because okay. of it. Yeah, it was that bad. Like, I, so I just stopped. I just stopped playing, and then I went to university in Scotland, like you said. And uh, I kind of told you a little bit about this yesterday, but uh, yeah, long story short, I, I, again, just wasn't really interested in playing overly. I went to the, you know, they go to the fresher fairs and they have oh, the stands. Yes. Yeah. yeah and the basketball team was there and they kind of like, they seemed to obviously nab you if you're tall. So they were like, oh, do you want to play? And I was like, I was like, you know, oh, it's fresher's week. <laughs> I was going out having fun. Yeah, exactly. So, I had no interest and they took my name and details and I said, I, I did play underage, but they're like, oh, how come you're not playing? You know, you look, look how tall you are. And I was just, just not interested. At that point, I had lost the love for the game. Okay. Um, it was gone. And uh, yeah, it was, it was crazy. And then I didn't play in first year really at all. Oh, okay. And then, yeah, I didn't play first year. And then second year, I 
Uh, they kept bothering me. I met one of them, uh, I think it was in Tesco. Yeah. And he's like, come down and just train. And I went d- went down, trained. Um, and I kind of, as I mentioned yesterday, I started to get into it then. I, I guess I was rediscovering the game as a six foot. At this point, I was six foot five. I'd go another inch. Yeah. So I, I had a lot of guard skills and I could kind of shoot and I had mobility. I could play my back, play face in the basket, but, but I was six five now. So... It was like a different game, yeah. <laughs> Almost like you know, and I, and I, and I was actually starting to get physically stronger. I was nineteen, and I had a lot of a lot of. Uh, I was kind of in second year. I kind of started going to the gym. I was hanging out with this other guy from the army who was in the gym a lot. So oh, wow. I was actually getting stronger, but then <laughs> yeah. genetically, I was just I was just getting to become a like a man versus a a, a, guy, a kid. So I don't know whatever happened. Anyway, I ended up getting really back into basketball and and kind of uh first year was over you know the drinking and all that yeah yeah so get serious um, now after first year yeah and i was studying more i'd got a job so i was a bit more of a routine and i thought basketball i was really enjoying it and i kind of started to go hang out with the guys on the team so yeah i ended up i ended up basically um yeah i ended up doing quite 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 well there with with the team in terms of like me just getting um, a lot of playing time and uh, stats. And again, it's the Scottish Universities League. So relatively speaking, it wasn't a, an amazing standard. Um, okay. And I played in the Scottish National League for the uh, the Aberdeen teams that we play against Edinburgh Rocks and those guys, which wouldn't be at the level of BBL really now. So, um, so the Edinburgh were tend to be the best, te- best team. And then there was another team in Glasgow, I think it was, that were pretty good. So yeah, so that was the kind of level I played at. Um, and then I don't know if you want me to explain then about the Scottish uni stuff. The yeah, yeah, go stuff. for it. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of like I probably would have just dithered on playing it in that kind of level. Um, that's what I was kind of saying. But uh, I, I, as I say, I was having some, some success in terms of like me getting um, good numbers at, at that level. Uh, and there was a Scottish university select team mm-hmm. uh, that I decided to go for. Um because you pick two players from your team and they go. So okay. I went uh, and we go, you go to a, like a Four Nations tournament against like England and um, Wales and Northern Ireland. And we played a, uh, like a friendly game against the Scotland national team. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. This is what I mentioned yesterday. So I ended up playing really well at that. I had like a 30 point game. And wow. then afterwards, uh, <clears throat> their, weirdly at the time, their coach was also our coach. So oh, okay. they... <laughs> Yeah, so there. So he was coaching both teams. Okay. Uh, I don't know why. Why he decided to, to, but he said, "I'm also the Scotland men's team coach, just so you know. Uh, I'll get. I'll set up the friendly, which is probably convenient for them. And they were trying to do a warm up game for the Commonwealth Games. Oh, okay. They yeah. did okay, and um, they actually had a more recent Commonwealth Games where they did, they came. They got a silver, Brilliant, bronze yeah. medal. Which, yeah. So they've actually, yeah, they've come on a little bit. Scotland have, but. Anyway, long story short, uh, we ha- I had a really good game. I had like 30 points against the Scotland men's team, which had BBL wow. players on it. Yeah. Um, so so I, I, I was happy with that. But then this coach said to me, are you ever thinking about playing at a higher level? Uh, and I hadn't really considered it. Um, I was still studying. I wasn't really committed to the study at the time. I remember <laughs> like uh, thinking, I'm not sure I want to do psychology that was my degree so then I thought uh, my brother was like why, why don't you go and try and um, go to some of those camps in Europe so I think that summer I went to a camp in in Paris and then I went to another one and that was more of like a development camp where you just oh, like, okay so I was, yes I, I paid the money for that uh, and he's staying in the place in Paris and it was a good level of competition there much better than I'd ever really experienced uh, in Scotland for example and we were playing against like there was guys from Africa, there was guys from all over the like Europe, and but also outside of Europe. Um, and that pushed me really hard. It was one of the most physically grueling camps I've ever been at. We had like uh, we were out on the track in Paris. Uh, I can't remember the name of the university, but an amazing facilities right in the center of Paris. Oh um, wow! And we were like, I remember there was like two guys from the Olympic training squad out making us do sprints around tracks. Um, wow. and, and and that actually allowed me to kind of understand how to train at an elite level. Yeah. Some of the guys at this camp were going to play pro 
and they were all around 20, 19, around that age. Yeah. So I was playing against guys that were actually already signed to play pro that okay. were like in their 90s and 20s. So I, I kind of started to see the level of training I had to go through. And I, and, and I was able to compete. I made the all-star team at that camp and that oh, kind of encouraged me. Yeah, and there was actually an agent there from France and I was like, I was kind of like trying to see if I could like get signed for a team because I was like, well, you know. I thought, I did, I you did very well. Team. Yeah, exactly. You did yeah, well. I so thought, like, I, me as well. Yeah. Yeah, right. So I was like, how does this work? <laughs> you know, like, do they have to approach you? And that's the kind of hazy part about the whole thing. But I'll like, maybe explain that a bit more. But I went to that camp. And then after that, I didn't get any any signing. I didn't really, oh, okay. there was no real, like, link between the players and, and, and any kind of an agent. I think he approached one French guy. He was oh, okay. a huge, 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 huge French guy. But he was, apparently he was already signed uh, for another club. Yeah. But, it was a really good level of camp, but there was nobody no. really got signed off the back. Yeah, there was no so sort of then, job opportunities and stuff. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So th- I thought, great camp for getting me to, exposing me to that level of basketball and that level yeah. of training, but nothing to actually get me to where... Um, I can get a job with it. I can get a job, yeah. Like, I want to actually try, try and do this just to see. So uh, we kind of went back to the drawing board myself, my brother, he was like helping me. And he said, well, there's an exposure camp, it's called in Italy. Uh, and there's coaches there watching, basically, from professional teams. Now, I didn't know much about it, so I took a risk. I think it was 135 euros at the time, which is pretty cheap yeah, to go to the camp. Yeah, paid for my own accommodation, and I turned up, and there's all these kind of guys who either were, were already playing pro, um, and there was guys there from national teams and stuff who were, like, younger. So I went to that camp. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I ended up doing okay at it, um, our team, they split you up into teams and then everyone played. And I went over with one of the guys uh, called Andy Stephen, who was on the Scotland men's team at the time. And he was trying to pick up a contract as well. Uh, and unfortunately, whatever it worked, his team didn't do that well. So they get knocked oh, okay. out. Obviously, you get less exposure because... You have you know, to, it, yeah, you have to win to kind of get in front of the coach yeah. or in front so of his, the teams even. Yeah, because you're playing more games, obviously. So we ended up getting to the final. Um, and I, I like I think I think it wasn't the final I had my big game, but the game before that I scored like twenty two points and I like outscored the American or whatever it was. So off the back of that, even before the final happened, two clubs approached me. Uh, one of them was the Italian club in the gym that we were actually using. For oh, the camp. okay, yeah. Um, and they approached me first, and then there was a German club, um, which was the one I ended up signing for in Pro B then. So it was just a bit of a weird, a weird, it was all very surreal. Like, cause I mean, yeah, it was kind of, yeah, you never, you never kind of aimed. And one of my questions on my list in front of me was, did you always want to play professionally? And really clearly, not. clearly not. It was just a matter of fact that it just kind of rolled into it. And kind of going back yeah. to 2007, I think it is, you got your senior caps with the Irish team. Yeah. So around the same time that I was kind of going over to this camp that same summer, um, just off my own back because of uh, the the camp in France that I played well in, I was like, I'm just going to see if there's that national men's team has any open trials. And it did. I think I emailed a guy called, uh, he was the coach at the time called Greg Gurr. He was an Australian guy. So Greg Gurr was, yeah, the national team coach. I just emailed him directly and said, uh, um, I just wanted to attend the the trials for the, I think there's open trials. He said, yeah, come up, come over then. So I got picked for the squad. Um, I think then we did our training camp in Sligo. Oh, okay. We like flew, flew across to Sligo. Um, so then they had to narrow down the team. And I think I think I may have got caught again. Oh, right. <laughs> from the, but, uh, <clears throat> but still, I, to be honest, if you look at the team they had, they had a bunch of pros. Uh, half like they had Americans, they had an Australian guy. Now these obviously guys with Irish heritage. Um, this is back. And then they had some the, back for the bust. Back for the bust. Yeah, this is back for the bust. And then they had like Paul Cummins. They had like uh, I don't know if you know Connor Grace. Like oh, guys yeah. that all played Division One in America. Michael Bree. So I had a really really serious, like, strong, serious squad. Strong squad. Like I, I wasn't sitting there going like oh this is unfair. I was yeah, like, okay. yeah, I wouldn't pick me either. I've got no experience. Like, <laughs> I hadn't gone to Germany. I had been to like the camp and I played in in, uh, in Scotland. You know, like I wouldn't be picking me either. So like it, it, I was 23, 24. And I thought, I, oh, maybe I'll get a chance after Germany. I'll come back and I'll play. But and then, the, after that, after that, they kind of disbanded basically after yeah. that, the, the national team. So it hasn't really been around since then. But um, Fingers crossed yeah, in so the future, hopefully. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that that was kind of it then. Yeah, obviously, but then I had my year in Germany. Yeah, uh, tough year. Yeah, um, what was that like? Your first year professional. I mean, that was that was an eye opener. That especially yeah. that level because and th- this team was like a. So there's uh, Pro B in Germany is like you have three. I think you can have three Americans. Okay. Uh, but a lot of teams would have an extra. Like sometimes we had five Division One Americans. Wow. Uh, so one of them had a, uh, sorry, three, two of them, sorry, I didn't get the number right. Two of them had uh, European passports because oh, one of their gran- yeah. granny did literally or the granny was from, excuse me, Germany. So a lot of the teams would be just loaded up with Americans. And then like, aside from that, one of the other guys from the camp was on the national Ecuador team. He was on our team as well. Then we had a, a German guy who's six eight who played in front of me at the four, and he was uh, played Division One Germany. So wow, he's like okay. that's that's like just you know off a lot of summer league NBA players end up going to like the German mm-hmm. first league. Yeah. So he, I mean, and this guy was six foot eight. He was like real tall guy and just didn't miss when he shot. He was like a jump shooter, and he was like a mid range like savant I guess I can describe so like I wasn't getting any minutes which was fine but like even to play at that level like and just to see how the professional setup works like yeah how they prepared and how they acted as professionals properly yeah well that that was the other interesting part there wasn't there wasn't as much professionalism as you think there oh right okay no the club structure really professional yeah the players had their how they acted sometimes oh okay Maybe not at a, at a pro B level because like I lived with the two with the German guy the six foot eight guy oh, and then okay. there was another German Nigerian guy who had played pro but they tend to when they're at that level when they're not at the top level they tend to ha- give them a job locally oh uh, right okay yeah and they study as well and then they play as well oh, okay but it's yeah. I mean don't get me wrong it's still a really good level like it's a better level than the BBL um. I'd say the very top clubs in the BBL might play in Pro B, but the rest of them probably wouldn't. Okay. It'd be yeah. a massive drop off there. Um, but yeah, really good level. The the club setup is was really good. Um yeah, it was just it was yeah, it was a pretty mad experience to be honest with you. Mm, like yeah. uh, they give you a car, uh, they give you like a house to share with some of the other teammates, uh, and they and they give you money and then it's your first year so as well so the way it works is they your first year out you're not proven as a professional yeah. athlete so you kind of have to sit on the bench and do your time <laughs> yeah or or you're you're uh, you know you know they want you to start but uh, sometimes even in the nba you'll see uh, like some of the best players you know, the top top guys will actually start yeah but a lot of times they're wait and see they don't give them a max contract first year yeah, because exactly. they're not proven you know yeah 100%. That, that's the the kind of way it works so the same way when you come out you're not going to get that much money first year like even some of the lads that have, i've talked to some of the irish lads there they won't get that much money when they first go out because they're not proven so until they have a year where they get like 15 points and they're playing a lot and they do really well then the next year you can go to a club and say this is what i did and yeah show me the money <laughs> maybe yeah maybe yeah. show me the money but that that's uh the money aspect of it was is a big factor um and the reason it's a big factor is because <clears throat> like after well I, I can go in and do you want to explain that, what i did after that really? yeah yeah i was going to say uh, actually just before you move on at yeah, the beginning sure. of like your first year as professional uh was there like any like realization right like i need to work on like getting stronger getting faster or i need to like improve my shooting was there any sort of like big thing you know you needed to work on yeah yeah i I had some i had some i mean you think about the massive jump i took like it's like i said scottish uh scottish league national league to to that um like I have a funny story about what, like physically what I needed to do. Like, so I'm like six foot six, right? So I'm probably in, in Ireland, you can get away with being inside of that height. But yeah. when I went to that team, there was Daniel, who's a six foot eight shooter. Mm-hmm. Then we had uh, another American who's six ten, And then we had this guy called Kareem who played in the first league for a long time. Uh, so he was a se- seasoned veteran. I think he was 40 years of age at this point wow but he was 6'11 super long 
and okay. was still really athletic. Um, and I remember throwing the ball up to the board. Took I took a bank shot. It yeah. wasn't a layup. It was a bank shot. And he went up and blocked the ball. And I, I just had never experienced that. I just didn't really know what was yeah. going on. But he, he did it like twice in a row to me. And I, and I, I just went down the court, like, like thinking in my head, like, what on earth is this? Like, this is a different game. It's like a different game. <laughs> like, this guy's blocking my bank shot from, I'm not, I'm not shooting outside. And he came over and blocked it off the board. And he did it again. The second time. I was like, am I not allowed to take bank shots anymore? This is ridiculous. <laughs> so, so that... I remember that I remember and I remember like I, I went and did a reverse layup and like the guy Daniel just came around and just he just knew what I was doing like the, he was three steps yeah. ahead of you probably yeah he was he was two steps ahead of me and then the other one was the three of us he, they did this these dunk drills where like they put the ball down on each side of the block and you catch it and go up and dunk it um, and that bit I, I was actually because I'd worked a lot on my athleticism um, I did like the, the jump training stuff and it actually really helped. Uh, so I was doing that, but then we had this other drill where um, they basically put the three standing in literally underneath the ring. Uh, and the coach was a seven foot one guy. So he was a big, big man. So he would take there, and then the assistant coach was more like guard oriented. So he was taking all the guards and he was like to work on like dribble stuff off screens and things like that. Yeah. And yeah. I remember, uh, he took us up to the top ring, just the three of us. And he basically said, I'm going to throw the ball up and then it's going to go through the hoop. And you're basically going to be fighting to get the rebound. And then we're going to, whoever gets the rebound, you're putting it straight back in. Mm-hmm. And then when it goes, it's going to go through again. And whoever gets the rebound, goes yeah. back in. And these guys were like fully grown men. And I was getting thrown about like no man's business. So I, I basically, we had Jim gym sessions on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday at 10 o'clock. And on a Tuesday and Thursday, we would have shooting in the gym at, sorry, I think it was half 10. So on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I was lifting uh, at, for like however long we wanted. We, the gym was like free. Okay. Uh, the club or whatever. We would all go as a team. So I, I, I was in the gym and I was like, I need to get bigger. Like these guys are just, I can't, even, like- I can't even baseline compete. Yeah. Like, so, so that was my like jump. that was your your welcome yeah. to the big leagues moment yeah but like yeah. they're not alone they're taller but they're stronger yeah so like i, I yeah and then eventually I, I i got strong enough to the point where i could actually like hold guys off and but like that that took me like didn't take me too long because i knew how to lift yeah but i had to get heavier and i had to eat more and all that kind of stuff so I, there was a massive adjustment there the other thing was my, my jump shots. Uh, one of the Americans on the team helped me a lot. We used to go in at like 11 at night and just like, he taught me a lot about shooting the ball. Um, and he was a fantastic shooter. So I asked him because he was the best shooter on our team. Um, and just like little things like shooting the ball up instead of out and okay. like a good way to practice form shooting with one hand. So like there was loads of stuff that I learned from him. So I soaked everything up and it did help me a lot. Now, I'll be honest with you, I didn't play very much because I was behind Daniel, Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this German guy, but uh, just even training every day at that level. Just it was a good, good so experience. Much. like Absolutely. Yeah. There was actually a point at which I broke into the starting lineup. Oh, uh, brilliant. Then Daniel came and subbed in a, 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 like a game after oh, and sure. played really well, and he was back in. Oh. <laughs> so that's how it works. Yeah. And then you came back to Ireland in 2008. Yeah, so 2008, um, I had actually planned to go back over and go and do another year. Um, okay. And, and I had this moment of like, I was chatting to my mum and my brother about it. Like, this is where the kind of, is the juice worth the squeeze? Yeah. And in my case... Probably wasn't. Uh, yeah, like you're not getting a, a ton of money, right? And you're... Uh, the way I was looking at it was I, I hadn't finished my degree. I kind of left uh, halfway through to go and try and do this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I still was, I, I still was like degreeless. So then and you're starting to, my brother was like, well, let's just play out the scenario here. So you play a few more years of professional basketball in the lower leagues in Europe. You make not enough money to retire. Is that a connection right there? Yeah, you're grand. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And, and this is where like the choice comes in and like when i talked to colin like i thought maybe i was you know the kind of only person that was thinking this but like he told me by the time he was 29 he had a similar realization um and this is not to put anyone off because i think it's for some people it can be a real, a real even the off. experience of doing it yeah 
but like for some people they could actually like you know keep going with it and, and make enough money or or they just want to live that life you know yeah, um, yeah. and maybe maybe they're not worried about the money but uh, mm. there was a part of me that you know my brother was kind of in a situation where he had a a really good job and he had like uh, excuse me he had enough um he had more of a means to go and do the stuff he wanted to do because he had got a like a, i suppose a, a corporate job i suppose uh, you could say uh, and there was a part of me that was like the security appealed to me almost more than did to go and do that for another year mm -hmm. because i spent that whole summer like chasing teams in that same league trying to get a contract but because i hadn't played that was tough yeah now, okay. i think if i had a had let's say if you'd gone over there and you had played a lot of minutes like i think colin played a lot of minutes in germany he could go get another contract and you could do it for a few more years and the experience is incredible um, don't get me wrong like I, I did try and go back and the coach actually wanted me to come back the next year so that plan was to go back he actually passed away I don't know if you oh, saw the okay. podcast with Colin but, but the, this crazy situation where he passed away um, and then they were restructuring the team and then they brought in this rule about having two Germans on the court so it just that oh, league okay. then wasn't really an option for me at all then so yeah. the, I had a call with the manager so then I actually was going to accept an offer in Italy um, and I ended up turning that down. I think Jordanstown contacted me and offered me a scholarship to, to finish my degree to transfer to them. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so I was going to do that. I think Deirdre Brennan, I don't know if you know Deirdre Brennan. Oh, yeah, she, um, uh, Anna and Enya Maguire's mom, I think. Yes, yeah. I think that's right, yeah. Yes, yes, sorry. Um, and I think her husband played back in the day for the national team. Gareth, I think. yeah, yeah. Gareth, yeah. So the both of them brought me up. I tried. I tried out for their team, and I was like, and I turned down. This is the biggest mistake I ever made. I turned down the offer in Italy instead of just like playing it out and then seeing how the other one went. I just like said no because these guys were so keen on bringing me up, and then that ended up falling through because I think they checked my academic records and I had failed some exams. So they were like, <laughs> no, you can't come in. So then I had oh, no sure. options. Oh, yeah, and I and I basically had to like. Be like, oh, all right, and then it was so late at that point to pick up another team. Um, and there was no contract offers in Italy, oh, which okay. was the the guy that ran the camp who had gotten me the offer. So that that's kind of how it went. And then I ended up like working for a year in Dublin. Oh, okay. Uh, I was very very fortunate to get business experience uh, with my mum's cousin's company as a consultancy. So I ended up doing business. So like I went from like playing pro basketball to, to sitting business. in an office in London with a consultancy company. So it was a bit nuts. But um, ultimately, uh, I ended up going back and studying and finishing my degree. And then after that, I kind of, uh, I started to look at, I knew in the UK there was um, some postgraduate basketball scholarships available. So I emailed a few clubs and tried out for, um, Durham University. So I went there and I ended up doing a, a postgraduate basketball scholarship in Durham and they were in the BBL. Oh, okay. So I was able so I was able to play a year in the BBL as well. And at that point, I think I had decided that like I wasn't going to go back and play pro, just straight professional basketball. Okay. And it was possibly because I thought that it might be too late at that point because I had finished my degree. Um I was like twenty seven. Um I think it was going 28. So at that point, I was like, I could go, I could have gone back and done it. I actually remember talking to the guy in Italy, but again, you're going over playing for, like, if you look at it compared to a corporate job, it's peanuts. Like, yeah, like yeah. At, th at that level. Now, if you get up to the higher tiers, if you get up to first league, you can actually get paid like six figures. Like, okay. then it becomes worth it. Yeah. But like, so uh, as sad as it sounds, it kind of came down to money for me and security. And the education thing started to appeal to me more. And I think when, when me and Paul Cummins were talking, we, were, we kind of said, like, using basketball as a vehicle to get exactly. where you actually want to go in life. Yeah, don't uh, let the game uh, use you, that kind of sense. Exactly, yeah. Don't, yeah, exactly. Like, cause, uh, That's not to say it could, but, like, if I had just kept playing in those, like, this is just my circumstance now. I'm not saying this for everyone. For everyone but, yeah, but for me, it. if I had stayed into that, like third league Italy or whatever that was, and he was getting paid like a couple of thousand a month. Um, what would I have got at the end of it? Like yeah, I would exactly. have had this whole rest of my life where with no real qualifications or world experience beyond basketball. And that's not to say like I couldn't have gone into basketball and made something of myself, but I, 
that just didn't know, appeal uh, to you that much probably compared to the corporate side and that security yeah that security yeah and, and actually i went back and really enjoyed studying after that and i was much more diligent um and yeah i just kind of the little bit of uh, work experience i got in the consultancy actually kind of made me think oh i actually could do this actually this would be more interesting and it's it's got some longevity in it too yeah exactly so, yeah and you spoke about it before you mentioned it briefly you had a cameo for the longford ga team how did that come about oh that was hilarious so basically i came back from germany and because i didn't end up taking the italian the italian job for <laughs> taking uh, the jordanstown thing i think they were in the super league that year okay yeah. um i think it ended up Either Paul Cummins or his his mate that was on the national team at the time, Eno Boyle, ended up taking that scholarship instead. So anyway, I ended up playing for the Hoops in the Super League that year. Um, I don't know if you remember them, but they folded a year after. I think Bride Saunders was kind of... Oh, okay, uh, was that, they were based out of the basketball Tala. arena. Yeah, out of Tala, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So we played that year. We actually had a really good season up to Christmas and then... I don't know what happened. And we lost in the semi-final of the cup to Donny, which is how oh, I right. back this year. We bet them in the semi-final, so that's going back on him. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, anyway, long story short, uh, I played, oh, I mean, it's Longford football, so in a way, who cares? But, like, <laughs> but basically, long story short, I went back and oh, what happened? Oh, yeah, I played for the club. And it was junior football in Longford, so this is pretty terrible. And I remember my brother being out in the middle of the field. And Philip's like six five. He he's a pretty decent athlete as well. Okay, yeah. And he's pretty good. He's pretty good at Gaelic. Yeah. And what happened was, I, my uncle was like, I was watching the game, and I was like, looking at these lads on the field, and I was like, these lads are, because I just come back from my professional athletes. Yeah. You know, and You're used to the training and the the like, so the yeah. lifting three times a week and extra training, like. Right. Yeah. So these guys are legit, like pro athletes and then i come back and see these lads in in amateur like complete like and ga obviously is amateur even at the elite level it's amateur which they know they train professionally at that level it's junior yeah exactly so it was a bit of a step down i'd say from germany yeah and i'm looking at these like you know little scots lads running about the field and i was like here give me a pair of boots and i'll I'll go show them how it's done yeah yeah Yeah. i hadn't played since i was like 15 and we ended up again junior football in Longford, but we won the county championship, uh, and we moved up to intermediate then. Oh, and really? Then yeah. That, that next uh, at the start of the next year, then Philip, uh, what happened then? Oh yeah, then Philip got picked for the county team, or he was on the county team. Yeah, because he, 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 yeah, that's what it was. And then they asked, they heard that we won the championship, and then that I had. I was on the team and I was six foot six. So they're like, what harm? Bring him out to the train. So they, they brought, I, I waited till the season was finished. Um, you yeah, know, it was the summer. So I came back from Germany and then that summer I was like looking to pick up a new team, but I was also playing for the club back in Ireland. During yeah, the summer, yeah. That's what it was. And Philip was made the county team that year. But then we won that, the championship and I stayed in Ireland. And then that next played Super League for all over Christmas and then that next summer then you went for the county team I went for the county team that's what it was I went and then I ended up making the panel we had a like a what was this um, a training camp in Toulouse oh with Toulouse, deadly with the Toulouse rugby team so that was cool that was really um, cool yeah I was really I felt really bad in a way because I kind of came in late because of the basketball was still on yeah. and a bunch of lads like who played Gaelic all their lives and Mads made the county team it got cut from like 30 down to like whatever the panel was in the end. And like, I got put on it. <laughs> I just showed up with about <laughs> two weeks to go and they put me on it. But like, I suppose in a way you can't really teach height. So exactly. Like, yeah. How many six foot six Irish lads? Especially live in, lads. live in Longford, yeah. like, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we did that for the year. It was a good bit of and What, yeah, what was, was that was like? What was the training like uh, at that level? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Like having just trained the year before, there was there was a couple of yeah that was tough and it's a different kind of uh, it's a it's different, a different sort of, of fitness I, even different sort of fitness yeah I don't I, I don't want to say this for a fact because I'm not a sports scientist but I think it's a completely different system like a basketball is more anaerobic which is like short I did a sports science course first year so oh, okay so I think anaerobic is short like explosive bursts. 
and aerobic fitness is like almost the opposite it's like longer distance yeah that so sounds i think when right. you're yeah. training in gaelic you're doing these sustained sprints at like 80 percent whereas basketball is super explosive it's much smaller surface area yeah. so like with with gaelic um i had to kind of retrain a little bit and um, i lost a lot of my mass up top because there's just so much running um, you get very lean up top. So I was trying to kind of, I, and actually for Gaelic, you kind of need strength too. So Yeah, um, it's a diff- probably a legs, different sort of strength as well. Yeah, my legs kind of change shape. Your thighs get really big because you're just doing all this like full out like sprinting all the time. And uh, it was, it was, I really enjoyed it. I actually loved it. And I got, I, I remember like, I don't know, I had this kind of negative uh, thing about being from Longford or like this, I was not ashamed of it, but like yeah, yeah. people don't people don't seem to remark it very well. But I kind of found this new pride when I played for the county, which was lovely. Yeah. Um that I didn't really have before. So that was kind of cool. Because I've been away for so long that I Yeah, it was probably nice not... to have the home roots and stuff. Yeah, it was class. And then everyone would come out and support you. Well most of them would. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes some people come to watch you lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it was great. I actually really enjoyed that uh, that experience. And then you went back to England and you did your degree. What is sort of, what's the favorite, what's your favorite country that you've played in? Just b- now basketball terms, like what's the best place to play basketball? Oh, and from the ones I played in, Germany is, a, is, is a, at a better level. Um, the organization of the game over there is fantastic. Uh, I would say the UK is probably the second best. And then just, uh, I would say Ireland's still, the level still a bit lower because the I guess the facilities are not quite there. Yeah. The funding isn't there. You know, for for basketball specifically. You know. Yeah. Oh, like the yeah. Funding might be there now for rugby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I would say definitely. Ger- you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I know what you mean. But for, for G- Germany, it's a well, it's fairly well established sport now. It's fairly popular, in certainly in certain regions of it. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but generally, they are. They, what I found over there is they're just really organized. Yeah, um, they're with everything with their trains and everything. Yeah, like it's a stereotype, but it's it, it's true. Like, it's, like, uh, and it's almost like the two sides of the same coin. It's the same with Irish people. I find like I've lived in I've lived in Scotland, I've lived in England, I've lived in Germany, and I've moved back to Ireland. And the same thing that makes Irish people lovely the 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 fact that they're so relaxed in a way and they're yeah. easy to talk to is the same thing. The kind that sometimes means that stuff doesn't get done the way it should. Yeah, Whereas exactly. like you yeah, find with English people, they can be a bit more straight laced and, and, and a bit uh, like anal about stuff. And it, like and that actually is a good thing in a way because they're because they get the stuff done. It. Yeah, they get more stuff done. But I think Ireland's, Ireland's kind of it's probably unfair in a way. I like, guess it's probably unfair, but it's just my observation of my experience. Uh, Ger- Germany, I remember one morning we were kind of driving to train early to shoot early or something. This was like about half eight and we got to this junction and i've never seen anything like it's like this is council workers and they there's like five of them jumped out of a van and they started putting cones out and they were like one guy was in the middle directing all the traffic and it was like that was unbelievable like in ireland it's like five guys standing around a hole yeah yeah. smoking a cigarette (laughs) pointing at each other i'll tell you yeah and and again there i'm exaggerating for comic effect but like (laughs) yeah yeah like I just saw a different, uh, there's a different culture around the or, or kind of approach to work in in certain certain way and, and their organisation. But another thing I noticed over there was uh, in that club specifically, there was a lot of support from the local uh, people, businesses in the town. So like we went to get towels for our house, and he just rocked up to the one of the local factories and then came out with all these towels in his arms. Why? And I was like. We were all like, "What the hell's going on?" And they just gave him the gave him the towels because they wanted to support the club. It's That's not amazing. like me. Yeah. It's not me and mine. Like, and, and again, I, you do see that in parishes in rural Ireland more, and maybe there's parts of Dublin where the, you know, but I just thought it was incredible to see that uh, level of support for a local club, and there was no like questions asked. Now maybe they got free tickets in it. Yeah, <laughs> some something there. Yeah, no, I think yeah. I think I know what you're saying, and I think considering the fact that like basketball isn't one of the main sports here like you said like GA rugby like yeah. those sports are obviously like ahead of basketball I think we've done like considerably well if you look at the talent coming out of Ireland particularly at the moment you know it's a pity that there wasn't more support and funding because I think the sport would just blow up 
Yeah, I think it could. Like, uh, th- being from like a rural town, I suppose you call Longford there, like it is in the country, but yeah. it's more of a, I suppose it's not like a, a village, like but it's a town. I don't know, there was, I got the attitude certainly from like, even from my mates or whatever, like they seen them, uh, basketball as a bit of a, an, a like, like a, a not, a, let's say a foreign sport. Yeah, or I know like what you a, mean. A, you it's kind of, it's, it's kind of seen as like, sport. I would see with, with GEA, it's, it's kind of like, oh, I'll do basketball in the winter to keep me fit. It's not, like that, I'm, it's yeah. not, I'm going to play basketball and do GEA to keep me fit. It's, it's the other way around. Yeah. Like there's not too many guys saying I want to play for Ireland for basketball yeah, underage. Exactly. Un- unless you play in a club that's really popular and then you yeah. get hooks. Then and your parents it's... probably are someone involved as well. Yeah. Or, or like, or like there's nobody saying, I think somebody said it to me in a podcast, like how many kids in Ireland are saying, I want to go play a professional basketball and their parents are like, yeah let's go yeah yeah where where would you play like we don't have a professional basketball league here and the the bbl is like while it's not a bad standard of league for professional basketball it's still one of it's probably a lower standard league than most first leagues in europe than nearly all of them so like you're not you're not looking there so where are you going like you going to spain or are you going and that's not to say guys won't make it and they they won't do it but there's there's less of a pathway already yeah. there for players yeah, it's yeah a, they have to kind of forge their own pass and early yeah like it, we don't have an academy like like for example Leinster Rugby like the if you're watching that team week in week out and you're a, a nine-year-old you might yeah. be like I, I'd love to play for Leinster one day like that's an aspiration there are a lot of Irish players on that team and they're getting they might not be getting paid in millions but they're, but they're, getting, they're getting, getting paid getting, enough yeah exactly they're paying enough money to be professional like yeah yeah I think they're getting paid someone told me like 300k some 250k which is still way more that's than a, like yeah there's a, a lot, lot of people like can earn yeah exactly so and so it was kind of that uh that passed through my mind like a lot of we don't have that yet you know we don't have like a, a leinster youth academy or we don't have like a, a leinster pro team that plays in europe yeah but like maybe maybe one day we could but you know yeah definitely. That, and that, you were saying with something. yeah you were saying with jordan like there is no like basketball academy eat sleep breathe basketball like just well i think like, Na- naba does oh, exist yeah in, yeah in dublin i'm not sure the links yeah in dublin yeah naba does exist uh and i'm not sure the links that has with basketball ireland or how that's kind of working i feel like they're they're kind of siloed off and um, oh, okay like a separate entity uh, yeah like i don't know how many irish players are actually playing there now there may be some i don't know but uh, from just from following that i think it's a lot of international players that actually end up going okay. there yeah I, um, I i don't know much about now but i'll really yeah but I, again i don't know i was so, the guy i wanted to get on on the uh podcast myself was actually to chat to him and i might still uh still reach out to him at some point but i i don't i like i feel like there needs to be a pathway in there i don't i, I don't know what clubs yeah. are affiliated with that or if it's affiliated with basketball Ireland, it seems quite separate so it'd okay. be nice to have like a pathway for irish players in particular yeah like a basketball Ireland academy, similar like that. It's just, but it's run by Basketball Ireland. That that is affiliated with Basketball Ireland, or is run by Basketball Ireland, or is, or is under Basketball Ireland. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. That that would make the most sense to me, at least. You know? Yeah. And then you came back to you mentioned there you came back to play with Aina last year. What was that like coming back to play Super League? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't even sure if I was going to keep playing again. Uh, I kind of, I kind of like back to the is the juice worth the squeeze. I kind of ended up playing National League Division Two in the UK, so I was playing there. And then the year before I came back, I played National League Division One. Okay. And it was for a bit of money. Okay. Um, yeah. So I was still getting paid a little bit in London. So there was a team there that asked me to sign, and I was like, I'll sign if you pay me a bit of money basically again it's side change it's not a lot of money but it was like can you cover my rent type thing that was the general like just to give you a ballpark yeah Um, yeah, okay uh, like that's that's the kind of conversation i was had so when i came back i was still playing at a reasonable level it's one below bbl uh you'll get a few americans in those leagues as well Uh, and then so i came back i was like uh you know maybe i don't want to play and then uh, i just wanted to maybe have one last year and play super league in ireland just yeah, to, yeah. you know just to see so yeah i came back and i was contemplating play for ucd okay and i actually was kind of going to go down and train with them and then the kind of my brother played for Ana, and i was like okay. i met darren and i met neil and i was like 
oh, I like these guys better. <laughs> I just got on with, just got on with those guys better. Yeah, you, cl- um, you clicked. Yeah, just clicked, and and I like the fact that they play the style they play is quite like Darren's not very. Uh, he won't really restrict you. Like I, you never hear okay. Darren saying like, "Don't take that shot." Or like, oh, okay. he lets you just play. But he puts some structure in there. Like he puts plays in there. Like a lot yeah, of plays. Yeah. But, but he won't really tell you. And he'll tell you like if you're messing up on defense. But he's not going to be like. I need you to run exactly this play and I need you to just set a screen and he just lets you play, you know, which is, as a player, it's, it's, that's the most fun. Yeah. It's a style you want to play. It's a style you want to play and actually worked really well for us last year. Like, so. Brilliant. um, Yeah. And you got to the, obviously with the cup final and did very well that year. It was brilliant. Yeah. It's class. Yeah. I mean, like I actually never got to play in a cup final. I've always been away from since I was 18. So to come back and play in an Irish cup final, was a cool way to finish it off. Would have been nice to win it, obviously. But yeah, like, well, it's your next year, next year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're going, I'm going to have one more crack at it next year. Yeah. So it, yeah, there and like are. Temple were, were, were a great team. Mark yeah. oh, is fantastic coach as well. Yeah, yeah, like serious he, talent. He, I remember the in the timeout when I watched the game back, he said like, uh, some, he had a brilliant line, like this is where our, experience and our calm comes in now lads he said it really calmly to them and it mm. seemed to settle them all really well and i was like it just shows you how experienced he is and how he knows the right thing to say at the right moment you know yeah it takes takes obviously a couple of goes in cup finals to get that experience and to have that foresight to be like right the lads are getting nervous and jumpy because the atmosphere in the place the place was hopping i wasn't even yeah. there i wasn't even there and yeah. i could tell from the tv i was like wow like i wish i was there it was crazy it's, it's a crazy energy actually yeah it was crazy to, to, to see that in an irish basketball it was incredible like yeah um and, and even like when i was in at work i was trying to get tickets for the guys and now i don't know if they were sold out because they were they had not released enough of them but like they were sold out within like 10 seconds and i'm thinking like it was crazy, all the people like, at work that were trying to get a hold of them and nobody could get a hold of any tickets yeah. which i was like this is either there's actually more demand for this and they should have more tickets or i think it's probably Maybe they didn't some release of that. all of them yeah i know what you yeah, mean yeah that's actually what i think was i found out afterwards yeah. it was like that they had taken a lot of them and then given them to the clubs oh, okay yeah, right actually. yeah but, i know what you're saying but, but it just shows you like that the people do want to go watch this like oh yeah. my whole office was like we'll go we'll all go wow that's um, brilliant yeah you're not my whole office but i can probably exaggerate a, a few of them yeah 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 <laughs> maybe just my team maybe it was just my team but like brilliant. there was there was people that wanted to go and there was all my relatives wanted to go and i had to like really awkwardly had to give tickets to like half of them and like yeah. the rest of them like, on the, on the slide like, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i had to ring people and be like i'm really sorry i uh, thought i had more or whatever yeah. so uh, i think there is a demand for it. like people will go watch sport like and if yeah, it's played definitely. at even if it's not the top, top level, the top, top athletes, if it's competitive, you go watch nine-year-olds play. Yeah. So like, just, and, and they put all the effort into the arena and I was like, but I suppose we don't have a bigger place. Bigger to, venue. You know, yeah. It's a, it's bigger a bigger venue. Yeah. 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 And do you think yeah. since obviously your last year playing here was 2008, do you think there, or have you noticed as a change in support and perception of basketball in Ireland? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I had thought about this before, actually. Um, have I noticed, like, uh, how does it go again? So have it was I a, a, the... Like a change in support or like a change in the perception of basketball in Ireland since 2008, so about 10 years. Uh, support, I would say it's a lot better. Yeah. A lot better. Because our Super League games now, we were kind of a club that was just kind of randomly set up for Shamrock Hoops. Yeah. It wasn't The support wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, even when we went down to Kerry, like they didn't have the crazy support that they had when we went this year. So yeah. the support level has gone up, which means more people are going to watch the games. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if social media has had a big influence there, that that's kind of helped uh, mm-hmm. clubs and then like communities connect a bit more. Yeah. I don't know how that's worked, but definitely there's more people watching it and yeah. going to the games, um, which is great to see. That's, that's yeah. incredible. It's good to, good to um, hear as well. Yeah. No, for a hundred percent, that's got way better in my eyes. Uh, the perception, like as in the perception in the sports world in Ireland of basketball. Or, yeah, like, as in like compared to obviously, sport, basketball isn't like the number one or even the top three sports in Ireland. But compared yeah. to what it was before, do you think there's more interest in it? So here, here's my thoughts on that one. 
I think rugby has grown as a sport massively. I think that's yeah. obvious as well. I, like if yeah. you talk to people now, yeah, like because of the success of the national team, because now there's provincial rugby teams competing in Europe, because we've done really well in the Six Nations the last 12 years, like I'm glued to those those games. Like when Ireland, or, when I was in Scotland, we were watching all the Six Nations and Ireland would be beating Scotland every time and they'd be coming, you know, winning it or like coming second or, you know, yeah. doing really well competing. And when you see that, that makes you want to go, you know, young players want to go play the sport. You know, we haven't had a, a, a team for the last 10 years, even a national team. Yeah. So these young players, like there's no aspiration there to go and play for the national team because yeah. we didn't not have alone it for are so they long. not competing, but there's no yeah. team. So I think there's a rebuilding thing there that we have to do around the national team because that will help younger players coming through. I think there's a lot of people playing basketball, but they need that pathway, like you said, to go play for the national team or to go play yeah. for even a pro team. Uh, the question is where would they play? Would they play in a PBL? Like, I don't think there could be multiple pro teams. There might be, you might get one in Belfast, one in, uh, yeah, one Dublin. in Dublin. Yeah. So, yeah, no so that mean. could be, or, or even like make a Leinster team, you know, like make a, yeah. a, a, a provincial Leinster team that could go play in play the likes of, Yeah. Against the likes of, uh, you were saying BBL and maybe even <clears> pro- <throat> provincial teams in, in the UK even might be a good show. Yeah. That's a good idea. And yeah. then, yeah. um, what is your top five favorite Super League jerseys and you're not allowed to pick Aina. <laughs> right, yeah. I'll tell you what's not in my top five. <laughs> that camo one from Tralee was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like the idea. I, I like the idea, but the execution, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I have to I'm agree. Just, I, I actually, actually, some people really liked that camo one. When I first yeah. saw it, I liked it. And then I kind of went off it. And then the other one I don't like, it's weird. I just, there's ones I don't like. I don't know if there's ones I do like. But yeah. the, one, the other one I don't like is Kilester's one. I'm not a big fan of Kilester's which, one. Which Kilester one is it? kind of like the red, like it's got like a lot of, it's got like an orangey color on it. I okay, just, it yeah. I, I, feel a, like could, I love their uh, black one. They have like a mostly black with a bit of orange. The, the oh, women yeah. wore it for the cup final. That was really like really clean and crisp. That was okay, really nice. that, that could be a nice one. I, I don't know. It? Maybe it's maybe it's just one of the ones I saw. I just wasn't into it. Okay, so let me try and think. I might only give, be able to give you top three because I can't actually Yeah, we'll go, we'll go with top three. Yeah. Okay, I did like the Belfast because I like that blue. Um, yeah, it's definitely nice did one. like that one. Yeah. Uh, what's the other one? So Temple Oak, the red, I'm not a fan of that either. Okay, maybe, yeah. Maybe I'm a fashion snob, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we go Belfast. Uh, I can't even pick Aina. Uh, DCU's is pretty okay, I think. I want to say DCU's is okay. Okay, uh, yeah. Mary, I like because it, it was like a green one. Yeah, I like I like yeah. the yeah. I'm pretty sure Neptune. There's there's one I'm missing here because I remember I remember actually going to a game being like, oh, they have nice jerseys. Yeah. So I know I think Neptune's is all right, and who else is even in the league at this point? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we'll say Mary. Uh, who's the other team? Mary and who's the other Galway team? Um, um why Colin? My colour, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Murray was green, but then I can't actually remember my colour. Murray, Murray's, Murray's blue. My colour would be green, I think. Right. Is it? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I, could, I could be wrong now. I don't know. I got those teams confused because I was yeah. just like two two Galway teams. And they both started with M as well. I completely didn't realise. Yeah. The, yeah. I, I, I didn't mind those those guys' jerseys. I, I'm kind of going based on the ones I didn't like. I'm excluding those. <laughs> and then I knew the rest of them were fine. But uh, yeah. I didn't really have a... There was none of them that I was like, God, they have a love. I'm sure... I think there was one team I actually really liked their jersey, but I can't remember which one. Neptune were okay, as far as I remember. Their, uh, the black one, Neptune, is lovely. The Their black kit, uh, I think, is nice. Yeah. Just di- different. Again, a bit different. You have a good good knowledge of the kits. I, I, yeah. I'm going to take note now the next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, moving on to your podcast, you set up Hoopfolio over, was it over quarantine that you set it up? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I, I'll tell you a funny story about that one. Do you want me to tell you how I, what, yeah, no, go for the it. idea came? Yeah, completely. So do you, do you ever hear of like, a, um, I would almost say he's like a, He's a marketing guru guy. Uh, yeah. Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk. Have you heard yes, of that? Yes. I love Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. He's another oh, he's influence, like, you know, right? inf- influence for this podcast as well. No regrets. Right. 
Yeah. No regrets. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. We might have even watched the same bloody video. Probably. But, uh, probably. Yeah. I, I was sitting up real late one night, as, as you do, going down the rabbit hole on YouTube, and I yeah, basically yeah. saw one of his videos, and it was probably that one because pretty much the sentiments he had was like, he goes, "The worst thing you can do is go to." Or he goes, "The best thing you can do is go to an old folks home and just yeah. talk to them." And he goes, "And you'll hear the regret in their voice." Uh, and, you know, I'm one of these people, because I went and did the professional basketball thing, I took a bit of a risk with that. I, like, I feel like that's kind of allowed me to, be, to, to want to go and try other stuff that might be yeah. considered like a bit risky or people would just be like, no, nah, it's not for no, me. No, uh, kind of off the beaten track, probably. Yeah, like so, something that you kind of want to do, but you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that because I can't do it or I don't want to do it. Yeah. So I watched that video and he said, you know, if you wanted to do something, like go do it, don't sit there and and be 80 years of age and be like, you know, there was a couple of things I really wanted to do. I was like, just, just yeah. go do it. He goes, just get up and do it. He goes, it doesn't even matter if it fails through its backside. Like you just need to go do it. And I, I that kind of uh, made me take stock a little bit. And I was like, I'm just going to go give it a go and then like see what happens. And uh, I just went and just kind of wrote out a little plan the way I would in like work for like, like the way I would for any project that we do at work. And I just yeah. thought I'll get together and just start it and just yeah. like, I know loads of people that play basketball, played in the UK, I got lots of contacts. I'll just start chatting to people. I'll just, just, just see how it goes. So that was it. And the yeah. who you are. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then how did you find kind of the first couple of episodes getting used to like being behind the mic? I know I'm still struggling even with this episode, like it's, it's awful <laughs> beforehand. It's like you're playing a mental game where you're like, oh my God, like I'm so bad. And it, it's terrible. Yeah. It'll take you a while to get hang, get the hang of it, kind of getting used to the microphone and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's an interesting one because I generally, I'm one of these ages that thinks he's really good at everything, but he's actually yeah. not. <laughs> and I always go in overconfident to like exams, like games. Yeah. Like I, just go in, I just go in and like, where's that? Blind talk to the them with confidence. Yeah, I, I like oversell, under deliver. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought I thought I'll smash this out of the park. This will be easy. And then went in and I was like, the first interview is with Jason. Yeah. And like J- Jason's chatty and stuff, and I know Jason. Like I, I don't know him super well, but I've played against him and stuff, and with him. And uh, God, I found it tough. I was like, yeah. sugar. I was like, because firstly, I got some of the information wrong, which was the first thing that happened, and I was like, oh no. This, yeah, is, yeah. this is terrible e- and easy he, he was correct i've done the same yeah i've done the same oh, it's terrible and he's correcting me but he didn't sound very impressed about it like he, he was kind of like <laughs> uh no that's four who does this guy three. from Maine? i think he is <laughs> yeah i maybe thought i was trying to like have a laugh or something I, yeah, yeah. and I, and i ended up getting like two or three pieces of information wrong in a row and then i thought i was he sounded a bit fed up with the fact that i just done that yeah. so then i was like oh no so then anyway we moved on and once i got into the flow of it it was fine but yeah that initial kind off. of like yeah it's starting yeah, off the first couple off. of seconds like the first five minutes i always find like nerve-wracking like you're just talking shite like <laughs> like and even now when you get to the end then you get you go down these rabbit holes you just i tend to yeah. go on a bit of a ramble i i'm terrible I, I, and the thing is because i was see the way i approached the podcast was um I, I read up a, like a reasonable amount about it and I was like, do I want to do like an interview style where I'm interviewing the person? And I did kind of want to do that, but I also wanted to make it less like, um, this is just me personally now mm. for, for my podcast. I wanted to make it less of an interview where I'm like asking super formal questions and more yeah. of a conversation, which is probably like what I feel yeah, like you're, exactly. you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Make it more natural because I feel like, you know anybody can sit there and just bash a few questions but just like having a normal natural conversation exactly at yeah. the start i was trying to stick too rigidly to the script whereas yeah. then eventually i felt like we could have more of a conversation back and forth yeah if you know what i mean if that makes sense yeah that's something it's something i need to definitely work on it's quite it's quite it's more difficult than you think because you need to get yeah. through the questions and I, I have my my little timer up beside me like it's hard to try to keep everything together uh, <laughs> yeah it's like, I, yeah yeah no i was just gonna say that like the because i was considering putting 40 minutes on the clock like a shot clock yeah, and being yeah. like we have to do this in 40 minutes and that yeah. probably would have been smarter in a way because people wouldn't have to listen to my stupid like two hour long episodes <laughs> or whatever but uh yeah i don't know that's just what i went for anyway but, yeah. yeah no I'm, I'm joining them so far it's brilliant and then what do you uh what do you think is Cheers. the best part of the podcast is it kind of hearing the stories i i always think of i think of my podcast as sort of an excuse to connect with a person 
and I have yeah. a conversation as you were saying and look if someone listens that's great and if they get something even better but it's just a conversation yeah. Yeah, me too. I see. I, I'm. If you're like, it sounds like you're like me. You love talking to people and meeting people, and, yeah. and getting to know their story. And like, you get to talk to people, and they tell you stuff. And there's no way you could actually possibly bring this or, or fit this in, like chatting to them when you see them. Yeah. So you get to yeah. hear, you get to hear their whole life story, and sometimes you just hear incredible stuff, like, like stuff that you would never guess. And you get to talk about basketball too, which is great. So and you learn from them, like they, they'll tell Definitely. you stuff like that you like would be like oh that's really good for someone to know who's in that situation if it's exactly. basketball or whatever so like and they'll tell you random like and some of it's kind of personal to them sometimes but like they're sharing it with you so it's it's i think it's incredible yeah i, I think yeah it's, i think it's yeah i'd be really the same cool. opinion it's, it's it is really really cool i mean this is my i think today is my fourth or fifth episode or it could All be right. could be more i'm losing track at this stage but it's just <laughs> so interesting i'm getting more yeah. hooks with every episode and i was thinking yeah. you know you know what if i don't like it i'll be like three episodes in and you know what i've done it like gary exactly. said no regrets but like i'm loving it like it's great it's it's great crack yeah i i, I was the same I, I i remember coming off some of the podcasts on an absolute high like i remember just like gleaming like literally like and, and it wasn't always like the you know the bigger guest or the like there was two lads i've done there now uh, that i haven't released yet like they're both ex-nba players and okay, they, were, they yeah. were they were cool but like some of my favorite episodes were just like i don't the know just of, different the, guys the people running uh, i always say flying below the radar yeah. yeah some of the best stories and you have you like you have a brilliant conversation with them and you just come off feeling great yeah it's weird it's like, like i wouldn't have ever thought i would have got that from it like i had no yeah. like clue i would kind of get that kind of buzz off it but it was fantastic and then for have people come back like i got one feedback from um evie nealon um e, uh, yeah she's in the states i think at the moment i was in touch with her there a couple of weeks ago yeah yeah so uh and I was eventually going to bring her on, but as I say, I'm, I'm going to change up the format. So maybe next summer I'll probably get her on. But like, yeah, uh, Evie came. She'd be, she'd be a good, de- she'd be a good guest. Yeah. Yeah. She just randomly emailed me on, uh, or not emailed me, but um, what do you call it? Tw- Twitter? Uh, direct message kind of thing. Yeah. Direct message on Twitter and just said, just to let you know, I've been listening to your podcast. Like I've always really wanted to hear the story of like Colin O'Reilly and yeah. some of these other players that I grew up watching. And she goes, this is, you know, brilliant. I'm loving it. Like, uh, and that, that like spurred me on to go and keep doing it. Just her brilliant. messaging me like, yeah, so that's really cool. even, even that, like, you know, um, yeah. I think you, you sent me one, you said, I'm listening to them. I'm enjoying them. Yeah. And I was like, it's great that people are listening to them. And, and cause in your head, you're like, nobody's going to listen to this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? you, that's you, what I'm thinking you, right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, like I'll definitely listen to them. I'll, I'll definitely listen to them. Oh, thanks. Like, I've one like, listener. There we go. <laughs> it's enjoyable like i mean like even even because you get to know the person who's interviewing too which sounds a bit yeah. silly like but you feel but like, like i've never i've never them. met you i didn't know who you were uh, when i before you set up the podcast uh, mark reynolds wouldn't like i didn't know you existed even well i yeah. knew you from aina but like i wouldn't have known you to say like hello or anything yeah but you kind of get a sense for that who that person is too exactly and, and you can kind of enjoy it like like even listen to pap price's stuff I yeah. feel like I definitely kind of have a sense of who he is a little bit just because the way he interacts with the people and he's quite nice to listen to and I quite like his questions and he's kind of funny a little bit. So I just kind of enjoy it. And it's, that, that's what's fun about it, I think, for me. Anyway. Yeah, and yeah. I think since, since like the idea I had for the podcast and then since like starting to record them, I've been listening to a lot of them to kind of get like, not ideas, but kind of see how things are done. And I was listening to one there last night and I was, I was howling with laughter. And it was just yeah. like, it was just because I got so invested and I couldn't even like, I, I had to, I just listened to the podcast the straight way through. And I don't do that. I usually take a bit of pause, but I just couldn't stop listening to it because it was just hilarious. Like hilarious, since yeah. starting this, I appreciate when it's a good podcast and I appreciate when people do podcasts because it's a lot of effort. Like there's a lot of back end, yeah. a lot of like post yeah. interviews, editing and getting them out and stuff like that. Yeah, even even scheduling the men, getting people yeah. to come on and stuff, it's yeah. it's a bit of work. Like, um, yeah. But I, I felt like it was worth it. Just if got a few people that listened to it and heard the stories yeah. of a few people, like even to get that bit of feedback was good. Pr- yeah. Probably one of the things I think if I did it again, it uh, would be more interaction with people. Like I felt like I didn't really go out and ask people questions about what they wanted to hear. But again, I wasn't really sure if people would be interested in even. Yeah. given feedback so yeah. I, sure you're not you're not a professional like it's you're going right. off a whim 
doing right. something for the crack like like we're not yeah, we yeah. don't work in radio or i don't know whoever does interviews and stuff like yeah so we're not put like your own media, spin on it media pros yeah yeah exactly, exactly yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah. and then uh you mentioned your guest there who was your dream guest if you had like a choice of anyone in the world who would you pick well, that's a good question, actually. Oof, actually. Yeah, there was a couple of people I really wanted to get on. There's one guy I actually really still want to get on. I bothered him a few times on social media, and I bothered yeah. him like tried to get <laughs> his attention. You, he or has something. you blocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on all platforms. So that's out of half the cards. Um, it, it was. Uh, he's in the NBA now. He's, he's Pat Connaughton. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. He'd be yeah, deadly. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was disappointed I never got him because I kind of was like going through the li- my, my list because I made a list of people okay. and I was like, most of them are reasonably easy to get one degree of separation. Yeah. And uh, I was happy when I got like uh, Pat Burke and Marge Connon, who the the guys who play for the national team that are ex-NBA got through to there. Yeah. But I was still trying to get it. I, I kind of gave up on Pat Connaughton for a bit and I thought I'll come back to him later on and I'll get him. But he was one guy I wanted to get just because he's – He's in the NBA, but he's also got Irish heritage and kind yeah. of... He, he could kind play of, for the Irish national team now. I know yeah, he's with insurance yeah. and stuff. But yeah, right. that'd be, that'd be right. a brilliant episode. Yeah, I'd like to get him on. And then I don't know if there's anyone else. There's probably a few other ex-NBA players that I would like to get on. I'd love to get someone like like D-Wade on. Because I, yeah, I, I love, I, I love cool. D-Wade. Yeah, that, yeah, someone like him... Should, yeah, you yeah. should definitely listen to JJ Reddick has a podcast. I think it's called The Old Man and the Three. He had him on. His podcast is deadly. That's one of my favorites. You definitely yeah, I actually listen to his out. podcast. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. JJ Reddick would be the other guy I'd love to get on. That's actually. what I was That'd about be, to say. He's yeah. on my list of uh, someday yeah. eventually. Should try and, should try and get, no, yeah, I think you will. If you stick, honestly, if you stick with it, um, I think you will. And and if you kind of can find a way to, to approach to them get or whatever. To yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd have to, you'd have to do a lot of digging now to get through to the likes of them, but that would be really cool. And then, in terms of then guests, if you didn't have to stick to basketball, you could pick anyone in the world. Who would you pick? Oh, whew. probably have to be music because uh, I love music. Uh, God, that's a that's a real tough one. I think I'd probably go for. I was going to say something like Billy Joel. I'm making myself sound like an yeah. old fogey now. Uh, or you know who I get? You know who I get? Uh, this is probably going back, but uh, someone like Anthony Cadis, the lead singer of the Larry Hot Chili Peppers, because he's lived such okay. an unusual yeah. life. Now, That'd I could just cool. go read his book because apparently yeah. he's had a really interesting <laughs> upbringing. Um, but you never know. Excuse me. You never, you never know who's listening either, you know? <laughs> True, <yeah. laughs> And then what is, you mentioned it there, what's your favorite podcast that you're currently listening to or podcasts? Would you believe it? It's, it's Pat Price. <laughs> At the moment, that's the one I'm listening to now. He's actually stopped putting on episodes, which is oh, okay. probably for, if, I, if, if anyone that was regularly listening to my one, then they've probably yeah. been like, for God's sake, why is this guy stopped? So I've had about three week hiatus, but I'm about to yeah. put uh, the rest of them out uh, starting from this week. So, um, but yeah, Pat, Pat Price was one I was really enjoying just because like, I kind of know him and he was chatting to some really interesting coaches like yeah. that were like, as I said, high level D one coaches, like, so very interesting to see his link with them and then how they, ro- they rose from where they were to where they are, which is kind of what I was like trying to do, but with players, with, he's doing it yeah. with coaches. Okay. So it's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. And to finish up, um, what I kind of like to end on is what's called the sideline seven. So it's the same seven questions to every guest. It's like, it can uh, be thought provoking or, fire around it's up to yourself how how long you want to spend on the answers cool. um, okay so question one is what is your favorite quote Ooh, oh, I, I have many quotes and they're probably all just just disappear from my mind now yeah um oh god what's my favorite quote uh i do like um there's a shakespeare quote uh, mm. ignorance is bliss but tis folly to be wise oh, okay. um, and I, I noticed with Irish people that's a great one because um, yeah. not to trash Irish people because I'm Irish <laughs> obviously but like <laughs> um, just like uh, people just make assumptions and they don't actually know they give their like I always say it's opinion that's opinion not fact because you don't actually know that you just think you know it so yeah, like yeah. don't talk in absolutes uh, try and find out what the actual facts, facts are don't make assumptions mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and if you if you don't know, don't talk in absolutes, you know, just because I used to do it myself a lot. actually. Yeah. And uh, now I try and go, OK, maybe that sounds right. 
I know people want to sometimes sound very assertive all the time, but I'm a big believer in like, you, if you're not sure, then don't say you're, you're sure. Yeah, that's cool. That's different to, yeah. I've done a few podcasts. That's different. That's cool. I like that. I like that answer. Uh, okay. Best sporting event, event you've been to? Oh, this is easy. Uh, so it was the USA versus GB pre-Olympic. So the 2012 oh, cool. London Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, that was the best. Wow. Uh, was Kobe, so cool. LeBron, Co- Kobe, LeBron, like D-Wade, D-Wade. Car- oh. Carmelo Anthony. Like Carmelo famous. Anthony, who was incredible and, and, and came on because it was like a close game probably towards the end of the second. Like I said, close game, like 10 points. Yeah, okay. Which is close. Yeah, given it's, it's close, you know, close G- enough. Like, G- yeah. For GB versus the USA, like everyone thought they were going to get blown Impressive. out in the first half. So third quarter, or I think, or no, it was actually the end of the second quarter. Melo came down and I'm about like, oh, it's so exciting to watch them that close. Uh, I'm about, I don't know, four seats from the, the front or something like that. Oh, wow. And, and Melo just kept, he just gets it and launches it like they just hit him on the three point line in transition, catches it, shoots it, and he hits like three in a row. And next right. thing, th- and then there's someone else ran in layup. I think Westbrook's came in and just dunked it. And it just like it just changed the whole. It was like, everyone was like, oh, that's game over. <laughs> and, but to watch like I, like one of the two guys impressed me. Melo impressed me. LeBron was LeBron. He didn't do anything crazy. I think he got a dunk in the game. Westbrook's athleticism is something unnatural. Like I, I'd never seen a human move like that. Like the, yeah. the, the level of explosion he has, and the, the, the strength, the, yeah. and the explosive strength that he has is, I've never seen anything close to it. It's, it's yeah. uh, to it's, see it's, that in person was ridiculous. I was gonna say because I always see like the highlights, obviously with YouTube or whatever. Like it's incredible. But I'd say in person you were just like, yeah, and and I don't know if it quite translates on screen because you see him and, and it's almost like he's like he's like in fast forward or something. But yeah. to see that yeah. in real life. Uh, everyone was just like looking around like that is yeah I've, and, and people I have heard people say like uh, you know some of my mates in London here like be basketball not in nutters like they love it and they, like there's one of my mates like who's a real aficionado is like he thinks he's like the most explosive player to ever play basketball yeah. I, I, oh, he's, de- he's up there yeah he's definitely up there you know? that's really cool and that team I'm trying to think who else was on it like again Westbrook Anthony Anthony Davis, I think, was on it. Like just, I think he, yes, he was. That's right. Yeah, he, yeah I think he was. He was a, I think he was still in college or something, but he was really young. But like, so crazy. in my head, that's that's the that's like they could play against the dream team and give them probably a pretty good game. Like, yeah, because that that level yeah. of talent, because yeah, it was that, tra- squad. that 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 draft were just in their prime. Like that draft mm. of Melo, D Wade, and yeah, and, and LeBron. Three, yeah, yeah. They were just in their prime. So, so to catch that, that was a like I felt the, like that was a lucky. Yeah, yeah, those those five players we named: LeBron, D Wade, Melo, Kobe, and uh, I named someone else. There was something I see. There's like Darren Williams, I think. Yeah, like Hall of Famers, like seventy five yeah. are probably in that going to the Hall of Some Fame. Some of the like. best players to ever ever play the game. Yeah, like, like oh, crazy so cool. stuff. Yeah, that's mm. really cool. Um, biggest setback or challenge in your career? A basketball career. Yeah. <laughs> My work well, you can career. choose. You can choose <laughs> professional career if you want. to. <laughs> no, we don't need to hear about that. <laughs> I've had no setbacks in my professional yeah. career. Uh, I'd say the, I'd say probably, oh god, I'd say probably the. I don't think me not playing in Germany really bothered me because I, I felt like I was just learning the game. Uh, I didn't play in, in Durham that much either, but again, I was behind an American, and he was just, he was a really good player. Yeah. Um I'd say probably. I don't know. I, I, God, I sound like an idiot, but I don't, I don't feel like there's any setbacks. Yeah, there's nothing that jumps made, to mind. Yeah. That, well, you see, like I made a conscious choice. Um, biggest challenge. That's probably the best way, best way to put it. The yeah. biggest challenge I ever faced was probably like deciding not to go back and play. I found that tough because I really wanted to give it a go and I felt like I could have got to a better level. But yeah. to be honest, when I got to Germany and saw the level of the player that was there, I was like, okay. <laughs> Like it's on another level. Like, like it is on another level. Like it really is. Like mm. six foot six trying to play the four. That's probably one of the, my setbacks or, or maybe mm. my regrets was that I didn't try and play on the perimeter more because as okay. a six foot six guy who was a point guard, had I been kept those skills and played at the perimeter at six foot six, yeah. then it's more feasible that I could have went on and. 
been more successful. But when I got to like the pro level, we played the top team in the pro B league in Germany. And there was a seven foot guy on the course. And then oh, the four guy was a six foot 10 guy. And these guys were built like, like, like huge, huge men, really heavy. They were like in their late twenties. And I was just taken off the court immediately because yeah. like, you just can't leave a six foot six guy. who's first year playing pro. Yeah, it just yeah. doesn't work. So then I immediately realized I was like, ah, I am in the wrong position <laughs> for, yeah. for, for, for like a decent level pro league. So yeah, yeah. that's probably the biggest challenge I had. And then I realized I should have actually, but I didn't know, you know, I just. Yeah, sure. You were you, it was was first year professional. Obviously you didn't know like. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. like, I mean, and there's exceptions like Charles Barkley was like six, five and played under the rim or, but he was a yeah. freak athlete, but so like, he was also like built like a brick wall. Like, yeah. yeah like nowadays a lot of perimeter players that get to the top level like the nba um they're like they're like six eight six nine yeah you know so so yeah. the you almost have to be like um i'm just trying to think of somebody now you have to be stepping out of the perimeter at six six you can't really if you want to go play at top level basketball or mm-hmm. even second tier yeah. europe or something like that yeah that's a good point like you look at the likes of ben simmons i know he's an exception to the rule but like he's a yeah. point guard and he's i six don't know 6 10 point guard like that he's just six, shows nine, six, ten. Uh, i know that's that's like yeah. uh an extreme but you know in a couple of years, you might see more Ben Simmons coming through the likes of six ten point guard. I think you, you don't will. Know. Yeah, I think. I, I mean, yeah. That, that uh, uh, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the guys who are like seven foot now are just like they're getting taught guard skills. Like, so yeah. it's kind of expected. Like a lot of those yeah. European guys uh, that they bring over. Yeah, Porzingis six, like, is a great great example. Porzingis. Porzingis, like he's yeah. playing the perimeter a lot of times. He's taking threes, so it's that positionless basketball. You, you got to be able to step out and shoot. Yeah. You got to have the handle. So it's like, yeah, you need to be able to do everything. And six six is is no place for you to be under under the basket for the most part. Yeah, uh, at that level, it's tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, what is then kind of the flip side? What is your biggest achievement on or off the court? Uh, biggest achievement. I don't, uh, uh, I'd say probably. Um, it's kind of a lesser one for there was a couple there was there was two for basketball that I really enjoyed. Uh, one of them was uh, we played against uh, Scottish universities versus English universities uh, and Wales. It was like a four nations tournament that I mentioned. I got an MVP oh, yeah. at that. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. And I, I, I kind of wasn't expecting to play that well. But yeah. I was really delighted with that. It's an individual one, I suppose. And yeah. then for the for my university, uh, we again were playing a Scottish team, and no Scotland team had ever done it. But we went down and we we won their British uh, the books trophy. So the oh British yeah, university. I saw that. I was doing a bit of research. That was there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that was cool. It was the first Scottish team to ever do it. Um, and then the year after, we got to the same final and we lost to Loughborough that was what I mentioned too oh, okay. yeah, but the yeah. fact that we won a like a, a a British trophy for the university was pretty cool so yeah. I was quite proud of that one as well so yeah it's pretty cool um, and then kind of kinda, oh sorry are you gonna say did you want me to give one off oh yeah sure off the court yeah go for it yeah uh, just getting two degrees I just never thought it was gonna happen to be honest yeah <laughs> so I'll take that yeah yeah that's pretty good yeah because you were mentioned before you left uh college in Scotland early yeah and, kind of and honestly yeah I didn't think I'd go back so the fact that I went back and got to I was delighted to be honest brilliant uh, and then kind of reflecting back what advice would you give your 18 year old self yeah that's a good question um I think I pr- probably would have I probably would have well, let's say my 16 year old self would have been stay with it because I would have known I was going to be six foot f- six. <laughs> yeah. So I probably <laughs> would have been like, yeah. I would have been like, in about a year and a half, you're going to get a lot taller. So just yeah. keep playing basketball. Keep going. I, I, I remember at 15, I was kind of, uh, yeah. Um, what's the word? D- um, yeah, I just became like, yeah, a little bit less uh, in love with it. It's just because, yeah. like, yeah, I, I don't know, you got to a certain age and you're like, I don't want to keep doing this all the time and play, spend all the time yeah so i kind of wish i just stayed stayed the course um now maybe i was still playing at the club level but not taking it that in, not taking that seriously so yeah. i kind of wish i'd do, i wish i'd done that and maybe kept kept it going a bit and i, I might have had uh i might have been able to go play like i don't know college in america or something but i guess when you develop at like 17 like it's almost too late like that kind of height or whatever yeah um, okay 
So, but I didn't know that. So you, you don't yeah. know these things. These Hindsight times. is a great thing, as they say. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, who would be your dream dinner guest and why? And the last few people I've had on have turned it into a dinner party. So if you want more than one, you're more than welcome to it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and this is this question. is anyone in the world and again if you had your choice uh no Oof. no limit yeah it's probably similar to like who would i like to interview or whatever i'd say oh so that was the musicians come to mind yeah. um i'm just trying to think i'd say probably um I have to say, I probably would be a basketball player, actually. I'd probably like to pick the brains of, like, someone like, uh, a, I'd probably, if, okay, that's okay, give me two people. You know how I'd love to have a dinner party is um, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, and uh, Magic Johnson. Just to, just to, wow. just, just, just to, you know, when you had your pick. Just, yeah, but just, just to hear their conversation. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, oh, you're I'd just like, like the fly in the wall. Yeah, I just eat dinner yeah. and listen to them. I would just yeah, eat dinner yeah. and listen to them just to hear what right. they have to say. And if they yeah. could, if I could hear them tell some stories about when they were playing, that would yeah. be cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah, that's a good that's a good selection. And then final question: uh, If your life was a book, what chapter would this be called? The one I'm in now is it? Yeah. This is uh, probably probably settling down. So I'm like. Okay looking to buy a house um i kind of have my job that i really wanted to get uh after working in the uk i came back and i got a good job back in ireland which is what i ultimately wanted to do um and kind of one of the reasons i focused on education versus the basketball was that uh, i eventually wanted to get a good job but back in ireland yeah you know? um i got my experience in london um so I was working for like Barclays uh, Bank oh, okay. and I was yeah. working for Lloyd's Banking Group. So I got really good experience there uh, and then came back and got a good job in Dublin, which is what I wanted. So it's, it's settling down time for me <laughs> and, and, and earn the retirement or whatever. So after yeah, this year yeah. I'll be done. So that's kind of, that's yeah. kind of it. Yeah. That's good. Look, Mark, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Be sure to check out Mark's podcast uh hoopfolio i make sure to follow his instagram and twitter at hoopfolio gave you gave you the plug there <laughs> Cheers. yeah, yeah I, I just on that one uh yeah I, as i said i haven't done it in three weeks but i'll be getting stuff out now i think it's number 16 so Fantastic. thanks for plugging that appreciate Brilliant. that no worries at all Cheers. look thanks again and best of luck this season yeah thank you appreciate it Cheers. <laughs> A massive thank you to Mark for coming on today. He's an absolute gent and has given me loads of help and advice. So be sure to check out the Hoopfolio podcast, which will be linked in the description box below. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave a rating and review. And if you're interested in setting up your very own podcast, be sure to get in touch with the Primal Productions team over on Instagram at Primal Pro.